Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh this class. This class name is a semiconductor physics device. And today will be the first class for the brief introduction. So we will talk about uh what will be the the lecture contents in this course and what will be the how we do the gradient uh policy and how we do the. The, the assignment and arrangement in this class and also we'll start to brief uh, review the history of the uh, semiconductor okay so first just uh, start from the 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 course uh, descriptions here so now I believe that the everyone who joined this class must be uh, very interested in the semiconductor technology especially nowadays the semiconductor technology has become the necessary to enable for the high performance electronics product so i think in nowadays our life cannot be definitely uh, uh, we sell these uh, high performance electronics so as you may know the semiconductor is already become the the key like the key uh, issue for the each country because many countries want to have their own semiconductor uh, industry and then in Taiwan I think we are very lucky that we have been uh, working on the semiconductor uh, since uh, like more than 30 40 years ago and then we have very comprehensive industry not only for the uh, semiconductor manufacturing but, but also with uh, packaging testing and design and the system level and so that's why that the, I think in Taiwan we are in the uh, we are in the place that a very good position to continue to uh, research and develop and also to have the production for the next level very high performance uh, semiconductor so in this slide just a brief introduce uh, some of the technology that you already use nowadays and that's already has uh, many many important semiconductor device inside for example the first one here is a uh, this I think that's a well known for the the as long as you have the cell phone, and then you definitely know that uh, in the inside the cell phone we need the most advanced semiconductor chip. So this is a uh, one example like inside the Apple's A fourteen. Nowadays the A fourteen chip is not already the latest one. So we have already the iPhone, uh, fifteen and furthermore. But uh, here is an example. So in the case of the Apple's uh a14 this soc chips is already consist of the around like the 12 million so that's already consists of the 12 millions uh so we have the around like a 12 million transistor 12 million of the semiconductor inside this small uh, uh, chips and as you also know that this is basically made by the TSMC N5 which is a uh, 5 nanometer process technology so that's just a uh, one example to show that uh, uh, for the nowadays that the uh, most of the electronic product that actually have a uh, uh, lots of a semiconductor device inside and of course for cell phone and also another one that the, the i believe everyone will use this uh, no matter you use the uh, most advanced cell phone or the the the, the some of the uh, the cell phone that not uh, very expensive you always need these these things. This is what we usually call the uh, adapter or the charger. So 
So the main function for this adapter charger is as shown in by his name. It's mainly charging your 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 device, your cell phone, your iPad, your laptop, even for the electrical vehicle, we also need to have the charger to charge the battery in the, the electrical vehicle, that's an EV car. So nowadays, actually, the charger is also the one of the, the important uh, uh, electronics product. And inside the charger, there are actually also lots of semiconductor components. In the past, I think most of you are very familiar with this one because that's a cell phone. You expect that the, you can perform lots of amazing function in your cell phone. So you can uh, expect there's a lot of uh, advanced chip. But the inside this, just a very regular charger. There's also lots of the uh, important components, semiconductor components inside. So the, 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 the main function for this uh, charger uh, this is a charger for the iPad, but the main function for charger is to do the uh, power uh, converter. In the case, as you can imagine that uh, when you start to charge your uh, product, your uh, electronics device, usually in Taiwan, we have the AC voltage around like 110 volt. But uh, inside the chip actually we don't need that high voltage usually we prefer with uh, dc and then we prefer to have a low voltage because that uh, can reduce uh, operating voltage and reduce the uh, power consumption inside the chip so in most of the case inside this chip this is a chip Inside the chip, we only need around like less than one volt or one point five volt, and especially it's the DC voltage. But however, actually our input is uh, AC and with uh, one hundred ten volt. So therefore, we need to have this charger. Sometimes we call as well call as a adapter. The main function for this adapter and charger is to do the power converter so what does mean the converter convert means that you just, uh, uh, transform the one voltage to the another specific voltage so that's why we call this as a converter so the main function for this charger is actually try to convert the voltage from the high voltage AC voltage to the one with the low voltage that we needed for our SOC chip. So that's exactly that the, how the chargers functions that everyone use today. But if you look at inside the detail of this charger, and then if you look at the circuit uh, diagram, you can find out that the layer many many semiconductor device component inside and first of all for sure is this one I think I expect that this is uh, uh, probably some of you are a new student enrolled in this semester but uh, some of you actually is already enrolled in the last semester so you should be at least a little bit familiar with uh, the this symbol this symbol is usually the symbol for the transistor so this is something that we will uh, talk about in this class but also on the other hand there's uh, some other components that are also very important but probably you don't know this is one example so this is what this is a dial and dial is also the one of the important semiconductor device and then it plays a specific function that's what we call the rectifying that's what we will talk about later so you can see that the inside is uh, uh, pretty regular like the charger there are already lots of important uh, semiconductor device that we have to understand and of course you can see that uh, this is more than one uh, uh, dial you have the this also the dial 
and there are also some other passive component like the capacitance like the inductance here and also we have this is usually is what we call the transformer uh, but in here we will mainly focus on the active component which are the transistor which are the, the dial we will uh, brief introduce in this uh, class and in general when we talk about this uh, voltage converter from the one specific voltage convert to the another specific voltage this is a domain usually we call this as a power electronics and every component we can make the power electronic is what we call the power semiconductor device so it's a semiconductor device that should have the function to do the power converting and also we need to make sure that they will be the very high efficient converting and anyhow this is something that the uh, uh, semiconductor technology you might use already in every day but probably you don't know that's already there's a lot of insight uh, uh, key uh, device architecture inside this uh, electronics product so here is a first course description just want to everyone know that uh, why we have to understand the semiconductor technology and also if you look at for the, the latest technology development there's a uh, still uh, under the debate that uh, uh, which uh, 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 transistor will be used for the next generation node and where we can uh, keep tracking on this industry roadmap so this is something that uh, you should uh, quite often see on the the, the news that the, the when the, the the very advanced foundry when they talk about their technology they always use this roadmap to illustrate that uh, how good their technology is so here is a technology development from the very early time from 2005 and then until so far of course so far we don't know which one will be the 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 main uh, technology option in the future but at least from the history we can learn something so from the 2005 around like the 2010 here what we are doing is to do the equilibrium scaling so you can see this is a uh, the y-axis is a uh, energy efficient performance so the major technology trend is that we try to push our technology to have the better energy efficient performance so that's always uh, the 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 one of the key index for our semiconductor technology and the first approach what we try to do is to do the equilibrium scaling so the equilibrium scaling is means that uh, we try to scale our semiconductor device the smaller as uh, possible and there are the several possible uh, uh, technology uh, approach here and one of the very uh, famous and now is a day is uh, the most of people use is using this as a how we call the high k metal gate and also with uh, strand silicon so as I mentioned here introduction of the strand silicon and then the high k metal gate stack so that's a strand silicon that's a high k metal gate stack allow us from the early time from the n 90 
and downscale around like the N16 here. So the goal is trying to boost the energy efficient performance here. And furthermore, we still uh, miss some bottlenecks. For example, we have the issue of the very high leakage current and device cannot turn off and we have very poor on off current ratio here. So that's why we have still moved to the new architecture here. So later on, there will be the to continue to boost the performance. So we have to come out with a new transistor. And also we have to come up with uh, uh, transistors that are new transistors that combine with uh, consider as a structure, new structure and new material. So this is something that uh, very important that allow us to do the uh, continued improvement here. And that's why you will very often to hear that uh, nowadays the dominant transistor technology could be the thin fat structure and also we need to have very advanced semiconductor manufacturing especially to have the uh, very small uh, size of the that's how we usually call the lithography if you have followed the the process related codes, you should be aware of the lithography. So in that case, we need to have the this what we call the EUV. So allow us to continue to do the scaling of our channel lens and then some of the key cell size. And also we have to use some of the, for example, high mobility channel. So that's something that uh, we continue to have the innovation in the semiconductor technology to allow us to, to follow the roadmap, to allow us to have very high performance, but also low power consumption and uh, semiconductor technology. So that's why the film fab structure is coming. We use the EUV, we, use, we have also considered the high mobility channel but also there's a one thing is very important that in the past that the, when people doing the design they just consider whatever the technology as a regular MOSFET and they don't know the difference between the 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 the, the old technology they don't know the, the what's the difference between the N28 and uh, N5 or N3 and all, also the beyond. And therefore nowadays it's very important that, that we have to consider the, 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 the designer also has to be understanding the technology and then the technology developed also has to understand the, the design and then also the system uh, performance target. So we have to uh, come up with a strategy because that's how we call the DTCO which is a design technology called optimization so that's very important so that means that uh, for the very advanced semiconductor everyone Whatever you are in the design, you are in the uh, manufacturing, you are in the device design, you are in the IC design, or even you are in the packaging, you are in the testing, you have to be aware of, you have to understand the semiconductor physics device because uh, the new transistor come up with a new operation mode, new issues, and that need to be fully understood and thus you can in that sense you can start to uh, push the technology uh, performance 
So here is a uh, like the um the the paper that I want to share that this is uh, some detail for the TSNC five nanometer technologies here, and then the reason why I want to show this is because the the title is already uh mentioned that something the key term that we mentioned in the previous slide. So in this slide, we mentioned that the, the new technology should be have the fin fat should have the EUV, should have the high mobility channel. But if you look at this title of this paper, that's, this is a very new paper here. So the title of this one is a final meter CMOS. So we will explain what does the CMOS mean later. Final meter CMOS production technology platform featuring EUV. So you can see that's already what we have mentioned and high mobility channel that's also we have mentioned and also fin fast and through density of the strand cell for mobile soc so that's for the mobile phone application and also for the high performance computing i think high performance computing that's a very key uh uh key product driving the semiconductor nowadays, especially related to the AI server, or uh, not only for the AI server, what people talk about now is uh, the AI PC. That means uh, if you purchase the latest uh, 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 laptop, that's already some built-in AI function inside. And also we have the what we call the, the edge AI. So that means in some of your component like this already some of the building AI function here. Uh, one of the example for the uh, recently I think very uh, interesting application for the H AI is that if you purchase uh, some of the the advanced uh, 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 earphone so that means that when you listen your the music you found out that this uh, advanced earphone they have the 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 function to lower the noise so that's a jiang zhao erji so that's a one of the example that how the, the how we apply the ai into our product and then that's we surely because in the in this kind of the product jiang zhao erji it needs to have very low power consumption and then that's why we have to uh call this uh function called the edge ai we will we develop this inside this product so anyhow that's also the key some of the key trend in the uh, the application side so this is a paper published in the idm 2020 and this is a technology nowadays in the production but you can see that the, the very advanced semiconductor actually is already used some key term we mentioned in the last slide so still as long as you follow this class in the end you should be able to understand most of the the key words that you will hear from the news or you you will hear from the the, the paper here and also in this class i will also introduce some of the paper at least to give you some experience that uh, the 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 knowledge from textbook of course in this class the most of the content are from the textbook but the textbook is already published like the 20 or 30 years ago and that's very old knowledge but uh, i also try to connect some of the advanced uh, literature to let you know that uh, what you learn from the textbook these knowledge are very useful are very practical because that's exactly we will be used in the advanced uh, technology. So this is one example. So I will also introduce some of the literature here. So let's spend some time. I think most of you are the graduate student or maybe the third or fourth year undergraduate, but you are interested in the uh, further higher education studies. So you should at least understand how to read the paper efficiently. So this is, uh, when we start to read the papers, of course, it's always starting from the, 
the abstract here, and then you can see that the inside the abstract there's already some of the key term. It's very similar to the title, so the abstract should be also refresh refresh some of the key term from the title. So title mentioned the EUV high mobility channel and blah blah these things, and if you look at the abstract, that's something very similar description. A leading edge of 5 nanometer CMOS, CMOS platform has been defined and optimized for the mobile and HPC application. So, you can find out that actually this sentence is just a, another refresh, refresh of the title, right? So that's exactly the same meaning, just like a title. Uh, uh, show me here. So this just uh, want to let you know that when we write the paper, it's not that uh, complicated as you uh, uh, expect it. Because when we write the, this uh, uh, scientific literature or scientific paper, we are not writing the novel. We are mainly writing the statement want to reflect the truth. And we mainly want to write the article that uh, everyone can easily catch up. So you can see the first sentence of this abstract is exactly the ref re So these are the very similar to the the the, the title mentioned here. And in the second sentence, this industry leader find nanometer technology feature for the first time as well. We have the EUV high mobility channel film fat. So that's actually the also the key term already mentioned in the uh, title show me here. And if you look at this, this is one of the key figure of course, inside the, 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 the paper, there are many, many figures here. But uh, among all these figures, the most important one, which will be the drain current versus uh, this is a drain current versus the gate voltage. So that's usually we call this as the IDVG. And um, in this class, as a, all of the device, when we talk about, we will always show the IDVG curve, no matter what kind of the technology, MOSFET or others, we always use the IDVG as a one of the example to illustrate the electrical characteristic. So uh, from the very old technology till the very advanced technology, the IDVG curve is always uh, one of the most key uh, electrical characteristics that we are very interested in. So this is uh, the, the, the gate voltage, that means we will apply in the gate side, we will talk about the gate uh, later. And when we start to apply the voltage, so we can start to see the current increase here. And inside this figure, we can also notice that the, these are the figure combined with the N fat and then the P fat. And this is because the, once we have the N fat and we have the P fat together, and thus we can make the CMOS technology. So when you see in the future, once you read the paper, when you people talk about the CMOS, you should expect that uh, this paper should also show the NFAT and PFAT performance. That's why they can claim this is a technology that can use inside the CMOS. So you need to have the both. N and P. So that's a very important uh, characteristic inside the CMOS here. And some of the additional 
We will also talk about this in the later when we talk about MOSFET. But that's also already shown in the trans, uh, this figure. One is what we call the D-ball, and another one is called the swim here. So we will also talk about like what does mean the D-ball, what does mean the swim here. So in anyhow, I believe that once you follow this class, at least you can understand I'm not saying that you can fully understand this whole paper, but at least the most important key message inside this paper, you can understand. You can know there's a EUV, there's a film fat, and there's an IDVG curve. That's already, if actually, when I look at this paper, uh, uh, I spent like the last one minute, I just look at this key figure. That's most uh, knowledge is that is already enough for me to decide that uh, whether we need to further understand detail or we need to find another literature. Okay, so the next one. So also there's uh, some new demanding on the uh, new application. So the demanding of a new application such as uh, 5G, such as AI, such as cloud computing, and such as electrical vehicle. These things trigger the innovation of the semiconductor technologies here. So this is also the figure. So this is advanced CMOS. So you can see now, again, the CMOS, this turn is coming again, but I believe from the last slide, you can start to understand what actually the probably you don't know the detail the physics uh inside and how the CMOS operation but uh, I believe you should understand the CMOS is now the combined with the uh, NFAT and P and P fat here. So the very CMOS technology has been the key amber in amber for the innovation like the 28 nanometer and 15 nanometer for the smartphone and 4G and 7.5 will be for the AI and 5G so you can see from here advanced for the AI and 5G that's a uh, industry is currently working on and also if you look at the another domain like the uh, electrical vehicle Although in the electrical vehicle, we don't talk about the five nanometer, three nanometer, but uh, there's are also many important device we needed to enable for this application. For example, we need to have the onboard charger. We need to have the main drive. We have the 12 volt, 48 volt, DC to DC, high V loads and battery manager management and here i won't uh detail explain for each one but uh, if you or your parents or your relative especially we just finished the lunar vacation so i, I think you must already know someone who has started driving the electrical vehicle and you therefore you must at least hear about the issue of the battery management, the issue of the onboard charger, because that's related to how charge faster for our device. And if you are the, uh, the people who are interested further for the electric vehicle, you probably also have heard about the DC to DC for the 48 volt or even for the 12 volt. And then the high V load is mainly the uh, transform the electrical energy to drive for the 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 car to drive the wheel. So in that case, the high V load is uh, one perform the function for the DC to AC. So that's a uh, very important. So uh, we uh because the battery actually inside the electric vehicle they provide for the DC voltage but we have to transform the AC to drive for our wheel. So in anyhow you can see that there are many many semiconductor technology inside as a one electric vehicle. Okay so 
the core knowledge for this state of our semiconductor technology is for sure the semiconductor device and physics. which is essential for every researcher and engineer who are actually in the semiconductor industry. And in this class, we will talk about the property of semiconductor materials, the physics of a carrier drift, the operation principles for most important device architecture, such as Dials. So in the previous slide, we have already shown that uh, actually the dial is an important component. And also we will talk about the MOSFET. So if you, uh, MOSFET have the same roughly name like the CMOS. So they are more or less the same things. And also we will talk about the BJT, which is a bipolar junction transistor, and also the JFET, which will be introduced and discussed in detail here. So the dial structure is look like in this way. We have the semiconductor material, but this material has a different doping from the left-hand side and right-hand side. And the left-hand side, we have the doping from the P-type. And right-hand side, we have a doping from the N-type. And the P-type, it means that this is a, a material that uh, has a uh, majority of the holes so if you are come from the physics background uh, probably you should uh, familiar with the concept with the hole and electrons here and then in the right hand side the the end region we have the this is a place full of the electron and because this, although this is the same piece of the one semiconductor material, but uh, has a different doping from the left and right hand side. So there must something happen in the junction region, where the junction region is here. So this is a place we call the PN junction. And this is also we will spend the time later to explain that the what will be the issues and an interesting happen in this uh, PN junction. So that's the first device we will talk about. And second part, we will talk about the MOSFET. And for sure, the MOSFET is the most important one. Uh, transistor architecture, we are still very often used now, even for the fin phase structure, that's uh, still the, 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 the kind of the base on the MOSFET structure. So the full name for the MOSFET is uh, metal oxide semiconductor. Feel effective trans, uh, transistor. So it's a very long name. So it's, that's why the people prefer to make this as a short with uh, M-O-S-F-E-T. So that's why we just generally call this as a, a MOSFET. But why the MOSFET is called as a 
metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And this because the structure just exactly look like the, the name. So the structure is first one, we have the piece of the semiconductor material here. And usually we start in, for example, as a silicon substrate here. And um, the most often used is a P-type of silicon substrate. And we will have the dielectric on top of the certain this place. And the most often one used is a silicon dioxide. And on top of this silicon dioxide, we have the what we call the gate. And the gate is most often used made by the metal. So we can also consider this is a gate metal. And of course, there's a something additional. We have to the in this region we have the do something to make this as a n plus n plus and that's the left hand side is what we call the source. In the right hand side is what we call the drain here. So you can see that uh, once you understand the dial. First of all, that can provide you some basic understanding because understand dial you are understand that the the N region is a place full of the electron and the P region is a place full of the hole. This is exactly the same. So the N plus is a place full of the electrons. This is a P region is a place full of the holes here. And also, as I say, why this call as a metal oxide semiconductor? Because this is a metal. This is oxide. This is semiconductor. So that's why that the when people fabricate this transistor, they just name this from the structure it looked like. So that's why we call this uh, metal oxide uh, semiconductor. And but why we also consider this as a field effective transistor. And this is because of the field, it means that the, there's an electric field. And usually we will apply the electric field at this side as a drain bias and most of the time we will make the source grounded and we will also apply the gain bias here so you can expect that this trans this device is actually less a certain electric field will influence you will have electric field from the gain side you will have electric field from the drain side so that's why we also consider as a Field effective transistor. Of course, this is just a first brief introduce, and later on we will talk about this in the detail. And then the last one, which is also very important, is called the BJT. And the full name is a bipolar junction transistor. And this BJT is a structure that a little bit relatively similar to the dial, but now we have a two dial connected to each other. So the BJT is a semiconductor. We have a three region. And from the left is a P type. Middle is a N type. In the right hand side, we have the P type. So inside the bipolar junction transistor, we have the two PN junction. 
So these two pion junction will dominate the whole device physics in the BJT transistor. But as I say, if you can understand the dial, then actually that won't cause you too much difficulty to understand the BJT because it's just a, another additional pion junction will happen in the uh, transistor. Okay, and furthermore, we will also talk about the recent progress and challenges in the developing beyond the Moore's law. Technology will be reviewed, but in this in this case, we will also consider that uh, not only for the scaling transistor so if you look at this graph and in the uh, left hand side you can find out this is a technology who are doing for the scaling that means we try to make the transistor as a smaller as a possible you have a 22 and nowadays we have the 5 nanometer and even we have a 3 nanometer and beyond and this is the transistor what we usually call as a more more but on the other hand there's a bunch of group of transistors they actually don't really care a lot of this scaling and this is what we call the more than more And inside the more and more, there's a something that is actually more related to the uh, interacting with the people and environment. For example, the biochip, for example, the sensor, the power, or the eye technology. This is other technology more related to the people and environment, and it's not necessary to continue for the scaling. So we will also talk about this in the, the course. And in this class, that uh, we also will follow this uh, uh, educational professional that's called Dr. Broom. And he actually set up the different goal when we consider for the education and also the learning and this is how we call the sixth level and of course when we try to learn the new thing i think the most basic level is we try to memorize we try to remember the the facts the theory and the second level is to understand and now we have to apply we have to analyze in the in the end we can evaluate the result we can compare with uh, uh, technology A and compare with technology B and you can come up with your own idea that uh, which one is better that's how we call it evaluate and also in the end the most highest level is we want to create something new so I think this is sixth level is pretty important when you when you guys start to learn the new things you always have to uh, keep this in mind that uh, for sure we always want to from the bottom to the top here once you learn the new things you can start to do the evaluation with a comparison of the the a and b that means you already reach to the highest level and then the last one is always good to create and in this class we are expand the student who finish this class at least you are equipped with the, the capability to do the evaluation of the semiconductor technology 
So that means you are at least understand some knowledge to compare with uh, the the technology A, technology B, and technology C. So that's uh, very important. So I hope this can. Uh, also, you need to keep in mind that uh, when you join this class, always try to push yourself to be able not only to the from the very bottom level on, only remember, but also want to push yourself, motivate yourself to be the engineer that are capable to do the evaluation in there when you when you work on your own project, own research or your own career, you can start to bring something new for the creation. So the course design in this class is based on the constructive alignment. So inside the constructive alignment, there are the three important pillars will be set up in this class. So the first one is what we call the intended learning outcome. So that's what we call the IOO. And this is the means that the, in the beginning, when I start to set this code, when I start to design this class, I already set up the several goals that in the end, by this class, by the end of this class, There's something that uh, what you should know, what you will know. So first we will clearly define the, the learning outcome, the Xue Xi Chen Guo. And then based on this learning outcome, we we'll start to design this class. And also to help you to understand this class and do the evaluation we will solve the another activity for example we will design we will uh, arrange some of the teaching activity and also we will have some assignments and assessment and test so we will explain this detail in the next one. So that's how this course will be structured. This course will be structured by these three pillars. First is clearly to have the learning outcome. And based on learning outcome, I will design for the teaching activity, assessment, and tasks. So the first one, intending learning outcome. So by the end of this class, you should be able to, first one, explain the basic material property and device physics. And second one, you are able to apply the device physics to evaluate the operation principle of the PN dials, MOSFET, BJT, and JFET. And in the third one, Evaluate the current issues in the scaling technology. For example, the short channel effect, the ultra thin dielectric issues, the uh, substrate hole swim issues here. So that's a main issue for the nowadays technology. So that's why we call this as a identify the problem. Once you are able to identify the problem and with uh, some of the understanding in the device physics and design for sure in the end you will be able to propose a design to overcome the challenges in the scaling semiconductor technology so that's uh, my goal for this class and i also hope that will be your goal for this class you are not only in the very bottom label, just uh, remember the 
the the equation, the the physics, but in the end we have to, uh, aim higher. We have to make our ambition higher. So our in the end, the, by the end of the class, you should reach to the level that you are able to propose a design to overcome the challenges. And I believe this is a, the 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 capability also you need it for your own research for your own work even for your future career here. So, the innovation in the end is mainly related to the problem solving. So as long as you found out some issue, you can. Uh, propose some design to overcome issue can solve the problem. That means you are actually on the way towards the innovations. And from the teaching and learning activities, so this is the first one is our uh, reference textbook for the Neiman Semiconductor Physics Device. So that's a fourth edition here. And this course, this textbook is not that uh, complicated, and uh, but I found that it's very useful. For sure, there's a uh, many many semiconductor physics book. There's a uh, one from the, uh, Professor Simon C. Simi. He also made a a very nice book. But in this class, I prefer to use this one because I found this one is more, uh, easily. To understand and then also uh, uh, every uh, concept is uh, relatively easy to 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 absorb and then you can have some good example to follow up in in this uh, uh, textbook here and also we will have the course line with a lecture note so all the lecture note I'm uh, a uh, road here will be also uploaded and then all of the lecture will be recorded and put on the YouTube and if you actually have already do a little bit homework to Google me to, to look at my my profile probably you have already seen of some of the previous uh, lecture video so I do this uh, uh, every semester every year I found that's very useful because of the in that in the in in this case, you can do the last of a review by yourself, and as I say, the video will be uploaded as well, and also there's a one homework is related to the band diagram. So we will, uh, teach you and then ask you to use uh, some basic software to make the band diagram here. And you are welcome to make the appointment with me. And here is our TA, uh, uh, Yang Yi, and he will help everyone if you have any question. So he followed this class in the last year. So he actually do the very great good uh, score in this class. So I believe that uh, he has a very good knowledge that if you, in case you have any question related to homework or all these classes, so anyhow, just feel free to contact us if you have any questions. And also, I prefer to use, because the E3 sometimes is not very convenient for me to communicate with everyone, even to upload for the, the, the course material and also for the, the lecture link. So you have to join this Facebook group. I, I think that uh, uh, in this class, I guess there are around 50% of the students who already enrolled in my previous class. So they are pretty familiar with uh, my slide. But uh, you, are, uh, you have to join this Facebook because that's pretty important. And um, in the future, the announcement will mainly made in the Facebook and the course material will be mainly uploaded in the Facebook and then also the video will be many upload in the Facebook as well. So you have to join that one. And if you cannot find it, just let me know. And also, one more thing is very important. That, uh, to be honest, it's very difficult to, uh, for me to arrive in the class by the 9 a.m. on every Monday morning. 
I think that's also very difficult for you. But I still prefer to arrange a class on the Monday morning because I believe that the, you, if you can come to the class on the Monday morning, that means you have very strong motivation to join this class. But I want to make the slight adjustment to make it more convenient for me and for you. So first of all, our class is origin, original set from the 9 a.m. to the 12th. Uh, a in the morning, but I want to reschedule from the next week until the end of the semester. We'll start from the 9.30 and we will remove the one break. So if you look at for original uh, course time set up in the university, there's a break here for 20 minutes. There's a break here for 10 minutes. But uh, since I uh, put the starting time a little bit late, so therefore I have to remove the one break. So we we'll usually have the break around like 11 to 11.10. But uh, in my class, you are welcome to do whatever you want in the class. You can eat breakfast, it's fine with me. Even if you want, if you want to eat lunch, that's okay. And if you want to go to the toilet, you are feel free to leave. So that means that actually you don't have to really wait until the break to do something else. You are feel free to leave and come. So basically, it's pretty flexible. So although our breaking time is only 10 minutes, but I believe that won't cause too much inconvenience for you. And also, we will have the class around like the 12, 10, and then the rest of time will be the Q&A if you have any question you can come to uh, talk to me uh, after the class. So we will start this arrangement from the next week. So from next week till the end of semester, our class will start from the 9.30. And we have uh, some homework and then in-class assignment for sure that uh, because we need to uh, make sure that uh, you can start to follow up this class. We will make some homework and also the most important for the homework is that uh, in the regarding for the exam there's definitely there are some questions come from the homework and in this class we will have uh, this is i have to remove this one because this uh, in the past there's a uh, this class is open not only for the uh student inside this class but nowadays it's open for everyone so there's no reception here so first of all we have a two exams here so the two exam will total account for the 75 percentage of the your score and for sure that's including one meter exam and one the final exam so the meter exam is a closed book And then the final exam is an open book. And regarding for the open book, the final exam is basically that you can bring whatever you want. And uh, as I say, there's a 50% of students in this class has already uh, enrolled my class before. I think you are all familiar with. So we will talk about how we arrange the open book exam in the final. So that's still like the long time from now and then we have the homework account for the 50 percent and then the attendancy is uh, 10 percent here so we have the homework for 50 percent attendancy for 10 percent and to be honest I didn't check the attendancy very often because I think that uh, uh uh this is uh you are the this is a course open for the graduate student so uh as long as you are interesting you should be motivated by yourself so attendance is just uh time to time just make sure that uh, at least i can understand some of your name 
Okay, the one more last thing is that uh, right now in the system we have uh, 60 students. And uh, I said that the limitation for this uh, student who can enroll this class is uh, 70 uh, students, 70 uh, 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 this kind of uh, student number here. But the problem is that uh, I believe that uh, uh, there are some of you who already write email to me say that you want to do the additional enrollment in this class but i have to make sure that the uh the in the end the, the student size is in the size i can manage so that means i can right now i cannot guarantee that the whoever want to do the additional enrollment that can everyone be approved in this class so you have to sign on this for the additional student uh, enrollment by the noon today. And then to fill your some of the basic information, your name, some of you are the undergraduate student, and some of you are the student who are not from the NYCU. And also explain like your uh, reason, just, just let me understand like why you are uh, interesting in this class why is this a class important for you and in the end I will make the announcement and then the main bottleneck that uh, probably I cannot uh, approve everyone is because the size of this class so you can see that uh, uh, the size of this class I think is already one of the biggest classroom in the NYCU there's of course there's some some larger one than the, the, the one in the seminar room, that's a bigger one. Um, but it's very difficult to, to, to access those classrooms. So I also, uh, therefore, it's probably, there's a chance that the, the biggest size we can have is this one. And right now you can see that we already have, I think around like the 90 percentage of the, your seats has been occupied. And some of the students who already enrolled in this class, they cannot come up today because they are international students. They already come later. So anyhow, there's a lot of uh, restrictions here. So you need to fill in this one. If you are not uh, enrolled yet and you are still interested in it, you have to fill this one and let me know. And in the case, I can uh, understand that uh, how uh, many students still in the list want to join this class and I can uh, try to make the arrangement as possible as we can. Of course, I hope I can approve everyone, but I cannot guarantee now because I don't know how many like the who are actually in the list want to join this class. Okay, so we will take a break now. We will come back later. And for the last things, I will explain again. In the Chinese, 就是說這門課現在有六十個人選然後這個我修課程上線的七十人在這間教室我覺得最多大概就只能做八十人所以根據我收到email想要再來加選的我覺得有超過十個人那加上目前來說應該還有一些國際學生他們還沒有回來然後
试一试。没有办法，看单子。好、嗯、好。那我希望你们先分享，但是他们开学的时间大概是在四月多。是。那我是呃，会在期中考试完之后再过去拿。是。就可能期末考的部分会需要呃，他们的日。呃，这可能到时候要再想看，因为通常我们只会有一份考试卷。对对对对对对对对对,对，所以有可能是，如果说为了要公平性的话，可能一个是，呃，有可能是，呃，不会用考试，可能是用来就是做一些其他事情。对对对，但这个分数可能就不会是太高。对，因为它就是比较 basic 的，就是这样子。但是我想你的红色那些都是比较。对，所以我觉得到时候可以再再说。对，对对，就是对，哎，因为这两天其实我这个呃出席率其实算是送分给大家的，所以其实基本上，哎，只要有跟我请假的，我会不管任何理由，基本上都都 OK 啦。对对对对。那我们现在老师说的。那就先用清大的，清大的，对对对对。呃，就是交大也有申请到，清大。哎，其实对我来说，就是只是要让大家呃 ，email 不重要，对，如果清大不重要，对。你是交大现在上哪？国办，国办的。OK OK， 你是觉得写写写进你们？哦 OK， 好，那就写一下。好好好，那理由再写。对，好。哦，没有，他意思是说，就是你现在是研究生还是大学生，然后你现在是几年级？对对，就是说你是。没有，现在来闹，来闹，就是你现在就是说你现在是大三的大学生，还是你是硕一的研究生，还是你是博一的？哦，对对对对对对对对对。那这样子没有，所以一样点。对对对。哎、欸，不用不用，填完之后就我有填资料，然后我就会评估一下。对对对。嗯，我应该是讲，我觉得就是呃，线上上课，如果你是看 YouTube， 这是对我来说是是没问题，但只是就是呃，我可能还是会要点名，但是我点名是不是不会到很多？对对对对，所以就是呃，如果我点名到那个 moment， 然后你确实没有办法出席的话，你在其他跟我讲一但是其中期末考就这样。其中期末就是那个。对，这个期末考一定要是。对对对，就是考试前，考试前会那个那样子。对对对，然后还有交作业的方式，那交作业是可以可以线上交的，对，但是现在呃，诶，但是可能就是要 email 跟我讲，对对，因为我我的在一三上面我是不开放线上交作业，对对对对对。对，但作业会宣布在，作业会宣布在，会会在一三会上面会会宣布，对对，会宣布什么时候有作业，什么时候交作业。对对对。对对对对对对，我觉得可以呃 mail， 呃呃给我跟助教，因为有时候我可能不一定会会会马上，或者没有太多工作要收到。对，所以杨明是只有你吗？还有其他人？嗯、我我不确定其他人。你是杨明哪一个？就是郑光。郑光哦，去年去年去年好像也有。也有去年没有来。对对对对对对对。那基本上，呃，我就是呃呃，我对出席没有到那么那么在意的，对，所以我觉得是还好。只是说有一些路我还是会要发的，就是说这个考试一定要先考，对，不然你这样去，我真想我没办法 arrange。对对对对对对。就是这些资金都会工作在。
，你说是考试吗？还是？哦，哎、欸，那个这个那个时间 schedule 我还没有 update 啊，对不对？因为那个 schedule 其实是我直接 copy 去的啦，所以他那个有些人反而上面写 holiday， 其实不是 holiday， 所以我还要再找时间更新一下，所以还不用担心那一个。对对对对对。因为我目前是还没有选。对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，然后再找回来加钱。对，如果有，对 ，OK， 好。这样好。
下课的时候再找我。好，好，谢谢。诶、欸，有可能。对，我想说，我把音准大声讲。对，那你是有事是吗？没有，没有。OK， 好。
是那个叫什么名字？徐敏儿、张晨佳。张晨。有这个吗？这位 ，OK OK。Okay, so we will start to introduce more basic related to the semiconductor. And first part I want to review is uh, the past and the future for the semiconductor. And for sure, the first one is uh, we have to understand what's exactly mean for the semiconductor. So the semiconductor is a material between conductor and insulator. So that's why it's called a semiconductor. So that's already inside the, the, the name is already implied. The semiconductor is a material that has a kind of the conductor characteristic, but it's actually in between the conductor and insulator. So the insulator, I think, Everyone should know the insulator is something like the glass, plastic, and the main characteristic for the insulator is that it has a very low conductivity. Very low conductivity. So that means, as being the engineer like us, for sure that we are always interested in the current versus the voltage characteristic. No matter for the transistor, no matter for the material, we're always interested in the IV curve here. So the insulator and low conductivity, it means that when we apply the voltage issue, have no current. So that's what the low conductivity means here. And on the other hand, the conductor, it means that this is a material where have the very high conductivity. And that means if you look at for the IV, current versus the voltage. So that means as long as we apply the small voltage, that's already have very higher current here. And the slope here is called the resistance. So that's uh, also the one over resistance related to the 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 conductivity here so the semiconductor is a material just in between these two so that means if you look at for the iv curve 
issue has a characteristic just exactly in between these um, still the same the slope is related to our resistance and the cool thing for semiconductor is that uh, we are able to manipulate this resistance we are able to control this resistance or conductivity for example if we change the doping inside the semiconductor then we can start to control we can change the resistance even uh, either toward the insulator or towards the conduct towards the conductor so that's a very uh, useful material for us so a semiconductor material has an electrical conducting value falling between the conductor and the insulator so that's a pretty basic definition for semiconductor from the from the wikipedia and if we consider the semiconductor adapting trend here i think that uh, we are just uh, living in the uh, uh the, the the timing that all these things is uh, happening from the personal computing to the mobile computing to the right now we have the computing that have to connect that have to compute between the machine to machine so that's exactly the 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 trend that the, for the semiconductor technologies and also one thing is also happening if you compare to the 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 data in the last 10 years i believe everyone knows that now is uh, we generate lots of the data in the daily base so there's a problem for the data traffic so that means we need to have the more efficient for the data transmission to data communication and also we need to have the computing capability to uh, compute to use this data to uh, manage this data so these all are the the driving force that uh, push a semiconductor toward the next generation high performance computing high speed transport high speed communication and so on and so on but it's also very interesting to know that uh, if you look at the semiconductor history what would be the most important innovation in the the uh, from the, the the several decades here and of course it's very difficult to make the short summary that what would be the the the, the innovation that the most important because we are all living in the different age but if you look at from the uh dr morris chan from his point of view this is a very interesting uh, summary from his personal aspect because he is just living in the moment from the semiconductor from nothing until the right now so if you look at uh, the 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 summary from his perspective i think the for sure the first important one is definitely the transistor so the transistor was coming coming out in the 1948 from the Shockley but Dean from the Bell Lab here and that's at just a moment that people start to find out that uh, we can make the 
the the uh, uh, this kind of device that can show in the interesting electrical characteristics. And the second is we start to introduce a silicon transistor because the first demonstration of this transistor is not actually made by on the silicon it was made on the germania but later on we found out that silicon is a material that uh, easily access and is a material that are more stable and that's actually become the important uh, foundation that are keeping uh, driving the new uh, transistor technology even right now nowadays silicon still consider the most important materials and the third one is uh, the IC technology that means we start to have an integrated circuit and this was uh, coming from the 1958 so and this is a slide come from the uh, 2018 so that's actually the six years of the IC technology development so that's why that the uh, uh, Dr. Morris Chen he make this uh, uh, talk to summarize uh, the important innovations and the one of the key person to have the IC uh, to to come up with uh, this idea for IC is uh, the Kilby from the tax instrument here and also later on there's a very famous law that's what we call the Morse law So Moore's law is a uh, data from the data Golden Moore who actually make the empirical prediction for the future uh, technology development trend and that's also in the end become the golden rule for the all of the semiconductor company and also later on it come out with uh, MOS technology this is because that in the beginning the first the semiconductor transistor is actually made by using consider the BJT bipolar junction transistor not on the MOSFET and in later on the MOSFET is actually coming in later but it's in the end to almost dominate the, the 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 trend the development trend so that's considered as a most fast silicon gap and also the CMOS and the sixth one is start to come out with idea of for the memory technology which is for example, the DRAM, the flash type of a memory, in the sense that uh, we have definitely mentioned that uh, the, the professor Simon C, who just passed away in the last year, but he was a professor in the NYCU and NCTU. And if you look at his name, on the internet you definitely can find out that the many many uh, Mandarin or English report about his uh, uh, bio about his book about his uh, important roles in Taiwan how to help us in the early time to help Taiwan to develop this uh, semiconductor education ecosystem and so on and so on And also, we start to consider have the assembly and test. Assembling and test, that's because the semiconductor technology becomes relatively complicated. So we need to start to have the specialized professional 
company who can do the assembling and then the testing. And then later we start to come up with a micro uh, processor. So we have a certain of the processor that we can use in our the laptop in our computer and that is that was come out in the 1970 and then was uh, first to develop by the the intel and later stop because of the the system level requirement and then also we need to start to have the vosi system design So VSI that means it's a very large scale uh, IC and then we need to start to have the uh, VSI system design and it was at this moment start to have this kind of a fabulous company. So the fabulous company means that this company they purely focus on the IC design. So and then after they design and they will start to uh, request uh, help from the uh, semiconductor manufacturing company like the TSMC, UNC and so on to dedicate for the cheap uh, manufacturing. And the last one which is definitely right now this already the slide from the 2018 that you have no 2018 although the semiconductor it's already developed for the more than 60 years. But 2018 is actually the time before the COVID. But the, the, the COVID actually is a completely dramatically also changed the semiconductor industry. Because in the 2018, the actually not that so many countries are very interested in the, the, the semiconductor technology. At that moment, it's also uh, the China and the USA, the tension, the war, uh, the trade tension is not that uh, high at the 2018. But since after COVID and people realize that uh, 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 many technology cannot be made if there's no semiconductor uh, fab to support and until right now, and then people consider the, the semiconductor, it was uh, the, the very national uh, call uh, related to uh, technology. That's uh, in the end, the big country all want to have their own fab in, the, in, in, in its country, like not only for China, I think you know, for USA, for Japan, for Germany. And they and even right now for the India and the, in the Vietnam, they all want to build out the Fed by themselves. So, and if you look at the situation right now, you will feel that uh, it is true that uh, the last important uh, innovation, which is a dedicated foundry. dedicated foundry business model. It's uh, the one that uh, who actually in the end to push to make the semiconductor industry so successful down right now. And also that's also the key innovation to make Taiwan is in the the, 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 I would say the almost the top tier or even consider the number one in the worldwide semiconductor uh, 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 competitions here. That's because for this uh, dedicated foundry business model, because right now, uh, not only Taiwan is already very successful in that sense, but uh, the USA, the Intel also want to start to have the dedicated foundry the Samsung is already had the dedicated foundry and then now Japan they also want to have the Germany also want to have the India and Vietnam and also for China so I believe the last is the this kind of business model is definitely the the very uh, key 
component in the end to make the the semiconductor are so successful at this moment. Okay, so that's the first one, like the demonstrate the IC. So this is from the Jack Kelby demonstrate the first IC in the 1958. And as I say already, this is just a, a, on a slice of a Germania and it was a single transistor with some supporting components and to demonstrate the, the concept for the IC. And later on for Morse law, Morse law is basically the observation that the number of the transistor in a integrate circuit double every two years. So that's uh, how actually the most loss means here. So this is in the in the beginning it was a prediction but then nowadays become like the the golden rule because it's very successful to make the prediction from the 1950 until right now most of the case we still consider like the we are trying to catch up this small law to have the increase the density every two years here so if you look at for the this uh, more slow uh, status until now we have actually the different approach to make sure our technology can follow the most law in here is uh, for example in the early time from the 1970 until the 2000 we actually do the regular dimensional scaling so that means that uh, we actually scale our device so this is a typical since we have already brief introduced the MOSFET, so I think right now, at least that's your second time to uh, look at this graph. So it should be at least a little bit familiar. But anyhow, it's just a MOSFET. Inside the MOSFET, there's a certain key dimensional here. For example, the channel length, for example, the R size thickness. So these are the key dimension when we design our transistor. And in the past, what we do is do the typical regular constant scaling. So that means that each generation, we just uh, divide by certain uh, number. And in this case, this is a channel length divided by the alpha. So alpha can be any arbitrary number, but it means that uh, when we have the generation one to the certain generation, we just keep in divide by a certain number so that was a uh, conventional scaling but later we found out that it's not possible we continue to do the conventional constant scaling because there's a certain bottleneck for example we have the the uh, reliability issue we have the uh, dielectric uh, leakage issue we have the substrate leakage issues here so later on People propose to using the equilibrium scaling, and that's already something we also mentioned by using the strand silicon and high K metal gate. In the later of this class, we will also uh, talk about what does mean for the equilibrium scaling, and also we have the in the very advanced transistor we start to have the new structure, especially related to the fin fat structure so that's uh, we make the planar transistor become the third dimensional become the 3d structure so that's a fin fat and also the dtco where we have already mentioned uh before so that's a design and technology co-optimization so with uh, using the different approach from the past till now 
we start to be able to catch the more slow to make our transistor density increase as predict by the Moore's law. <coughs> but of course, the scaling still under the, the pressure. So you can see that the, from the, until like the 10 nanometer, that still have the perfect uh, density increase. But later on, we start to slow down this uh, uh, scaling. That's why we need to have more innovations in the semiconductor technology here. So this is uh, uh, under for the 14 nanometer uh, fin fat that still pretty follow the most law. But uh, below five nanometer, even for 2.5, we still uh, uh, meet some problem to come out to try to catch up the most law. But right now, I think we do have some good strategy. So we will talk about this later. So this is just uh, one of the uh, slides to introduce uh, the how small our transistor is compared to the some uh, well-known small things. For example, if you look at this is a hydrogen atom. This is a water molecule. This is a carbon nanotube. This is a virus. And this is a bacteria. So I think it's very obvious now. Semiconductor dimension is already below the size of the virus. And right now even approach to the even further. So the chip technology is already shrinking to extremely small size. Now it's nowadays a bit larger than the water molecule. And then if you look at for the evolution of the microelectronics from early time to the nowadays, still some of the technology that I want to mention. The first one in early time is still using the uh, vacuum tubes. So that's uh, the vacuum tube. And then we start to have the bipolar so that's exactly, uh, we have mentioned that the first generation of the transistor is not actually the MOSFET, it's uh, actually the bipolar. And what does it mean the bipolar? The bipolar actually just uh, suggests that uh, this is a transistor has to deal with uh, two different carrier. These two different carrier will both exist and uh, operate at the same time, which are the electrons and holes. So that's uh, the bipolar. That means that we have the two different carrier here. So once we talk about the BZT, we start to need to deal with the situation that we need to consider the electrons a movement, electron physics, and also consider the whole movement as well. And the last one, which is definitely the most important one, is a MOSFET. So the MOSFET is basically, we can consider this is a unipolar device. So unipolar, it means that there's only the one carrier who dominates the uh, carrier transport. And in in the case, if for example, in the typical, like the with the P-type substrate, the electron can be the main dominating uh, a carrier that transport in the channel. And this is because if you look at the MOSFET structure here. If you consider the uh, P-type substrate as an example, and we have the source and drain here, and we have the dielectric. We have the gate metal. 
here. Although we, although I think the most fab will be detailed lecture in the after the midterm, but the before midterm we will start to use the most fab as the last example introduce the basic physics and some of the issue because the most fab is the most important one. So once you once we really approach to the chapter for the most fab, you will be quite familiar with the structure and some of the basic uh, physics as well. And here, I just want to illustrate that uh, this is a typical MOSFET structure. And how actually the MOSFET operating here? Even right now, you don't understand the quantum physics. You don't have the uh, basic understand the, the PN dial and whatever. But I believe that the, 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 the later a uh, brief introduction still can give you some sense of how MOSFET operating here. So, in most of the case, we were grounded in the source side. And as I say, in the most of the case, we will apply the drain voltage in the drain side. We also will apply the gate voltage here. And in the pretty like the basic physics, you can imagine that if you have the positive gate bias applied here, for sure, you will start to attract the electrons, right? This is not related to the semiconductor physics. This is just a high school physics. You apply the it high positive bias in the one side for sure you will start to attract electron from some other wires to move to the positive voltage right so i think that's a high high school physics and the interesting thing is this is a dielectric so what does it mean a dielectric dielectric just like the barrier like the wall here so that means you apply the gate voltage here you start to attract electrons. Right now, we won't discuss where these electrons are from. You just accept that the definitely there's uh, some place will uh, uh, supply the electron and then therefore the electron will be attracted here. And because this is a dielectric, this is a insulator. So this electron is likely just to stop at this place, cannot go up. For sure, in real reality case, it can go up. We will talk about later. But right now, just use a very basic physics. We can expect you apply gate bias. You start to attract electron here. But the electron cannot go anywhere because this is insulator. At the meantime, we will also apply the drain bias in the right-hand side. Then, that means these electrons can start to flow to run from the left to the right, right? Because the right hand side, there's no insulator, there's no barrier, there's no dielectric. So that means this electron flow from the left to the right will become the current flow out. In here, I mean the electron current. I prefer to use the electron current to illustrate. In real case, the current of position just the opposite to the electron current. So that means this is direction for electron current and the real current direction is here. But here we just illustrate this is a electron current. Now, with this basic understanding, that's enough for us to understand why there's an IDVG curve. And the IDVG curve is usually happen. We also apply the certain drain bias, which typically is like a one volt. So that means that uh, we are in the meantime to increase the gate bias. But at the meantime, the drain bias is constantly applied. And when we apply the gate bias here, first of all, you can imagine 
there should be there's no electron in below. It needs to be larger enough to the certain criteria. You start to have the enough electrons accumulate here. So once you bias up to here, you start to have the current. Oh, sorry. Once you apply up to here, start to have a current. Start to have a current increase, like in this way. So that's why the IDVG curve it shows like here. If you look at for the previous TSNC five nanometer paper, they have exactly the same IDVG curve just I show me here. But in that case, he used a five nanometer film fair as an example. In here, I use a very old, very conventional MOSFET as an example. But the the, I, the electrical characteristic are more or less the same. So this is a IDVG curve that which is very important in the uh in the further we understand for the semiconductor characteristic. And of course, there's a some key number we are interested in, which is this one. That's usually we call this as a threshold voltage. What does it mean the threshold hole? Threshold hole is uh, the value that uh, once you larger than this uh, value, something's happened. That's how we call the threshold hole, Men -kai. So actually the threshold voltage is uh, once we apply the voltage larger than VTH, the current start to flow. So once we current lot uh, apply larger than VTH, then you start to have the current flow. You start to have a current flow, electron current flow from the source to the drain side. Okay, so right now this is still in the moment that uh, we don't talk about the quantum phases. We don't talk about the PN junction. We don't talk about any very complicated. But I believe that uh, with this basic understanding, you can start to get a sense that uh, how actually the IDVG how the transistor working and then also if you can understand this graph that should not be difficult for you to understand the TSNC five nanometer very advanced paper okay so then the further evolution of the semiconductor is all related to how we continue to improve our IDVG curve so as I say the typical IDVG, as I say, is uh, shown me here. We have the drain current versus uh, gate voltage. And right now, I think that's your, uh, I think we just start this class around like the one and a half year, one and a half hour. That's already maybe the third time or fourth time I mentioned this curve. So issue at least a little bit familiar with you. So the IDVG curve should be look like in this way. Here. And we all know this is how we call this uh, threshold voltage. And the first, for sure, that uh, we are not all not satisfied this uh, IDVG want to do something improvement. So the first improvement we are interested in is to have the mobility improvement. And mobility improvement is we want to increase the on current. And which is on current? Here is on current. So we want to have the exactly the same characteristic. We want to have the larger current. So you have to uh, understand the basic idea. Higher current is also related to higher performance. So we want to have a larger ion here. So that's why we start to 
employ the strength city club. We sometimes we use a Germanian channel, sometimes we use a three five material, and these are the to improve the channel. And where is the channel? This is channel. Why this is channel? Because. This is a channel. This is a place where our carrier flow, and that's why we call this as a channel. So if you look at this one, we are trying to do some innovation in the channel because we want to improve the ion. And in here, from this is a real, uh, semiconductor structure, but but that's very similar to what we have been drawn. This is a source. This is a drum. This is a gate. So that's exactly already illustrated. So I believe now, from today, in the future, this figure should not be problem with you because that's very similar to the typical MOSFET structure here. And we also do the strength silicon is because we want to. Strength silicon is put in here. In here, we won't talk too much detail, but strength silicon, the idea is to push the mobility and then to increase uh, the arm current. But uh, there's still the problem. That's still not enough for the uh, uh, latest technology. Because if you look at the MOSFET, So right now, I think this is N plus, this is N plus, and this is a P type of substrate here. And we have the dielectric here. We have a gate metal here. But when we do the uh, scaling, this is our channel. As you know, that uh, one of the way to uh, follow the most law is we are actually interested in the scaling. So we want to make our channel as a smaller, make our dielectric small thinner. So we have to do the channel scaling. So that means we have to make this gap as a smaller as a possible. But the problem will be once we make the channel length as a smaller, there's an issue. We found out that the, the this is a N plus. That means this is a place full of the electron. This is N plus. This is a place full of the electron. And we found out once you do the scaling, the electron from the source has a chance to jump to the right hand side even there's no channel here if you look at just a little bit recall so in the regular operation first we need to form this electron and then the electron can be flow from source to drag here but uh, if we make the transistor very small the electron can already flow from the left to the right even there's no channel formed in this region. And this is because due to the tunneling. Of course, to understand the tunneling, we need to have the quantum mechanics. That's why we need to learn the quantum physics. But right now, we will talk about quantum physics later. But in here, just uh introduce uh, let you know that uh, as long as this makes smaller there's a chance this electron can flow from the right to the left here and that's we call this as a tunneling mechanism but uh, what actually this tunneling matter with us is mainly related to again from the IDVG curve. So if you look at from IDVG curve, 
But now I have to redraw as a log scale. Because in a log scale, we can start to see this curve will be look like in this way. And usually, we define this as a off curve because this is a, a region that you get voltage is below your threshold voltage. So this is our VTH here. So if you get voltage below your threshold voltage, this should be the off state current and it should be the re, uh, the operation region that have very lower of state leakage current here. And this still the same. This is our on current here. And in the previous, when we discussed this uh, mobility improvement here, we are what we actually interested in is improve the on current. But uh, there's a problem that even there's no channel, that means this is at the condition where your VG is smaller than your VTH. So this is a condition you bias here. But because your channel is very small, there's a chance for the tunneling happen. And this tunneling will increase our off leakage current. This is because the channel length is reduced. And this will become the problem is that the, our ion over I of this ratio is reduced because we want to ideal case we want to this as a larger as a possible this as a smaller as a possible so that means this value should be larger as large as possible but uh, if we have the leakage current increase this will reduce and that will cause some problem for our transistor especially related to the reliability issues here so then in the advanced generation of the transistor our goal right now is want to make this on off ratio as large as possible so that's why we will start to consider as a different architecture because we want to reduce this issue here. So therefore, if you look at this one, to reduce this issue, to reduce this tunneling is actually related to the issue of the electrostatic because it's related to the electro potential uh, distribution inside the tr transistor so sometimes we call this as the electrostatic so electrostatic improvement by the new device geometry the goal is to increase the on of current ratio and there are several different approach here the first one is soi so that's a silicon on insulator and this approach is very straightforward why because we have been mentioned the leak current is mainly come from here so if we place a insulator in here then we can reduce this leak current right so that's why we call this as a SOI silicon on insulator so you can see just uh, inside the silicon we put uh, the insulator because we want to reduce the uh, substrate tunneling leakage current and also we start to employ some of the advanced structure called the fin fat so this is a three-dimensional structure we will talk about uh, later and this is what we call the, the nano Y here. So we have the transistor called the 
thin fat and nano white and this is a, a three dimensional structure because we want to have the better control of the off leach current so the next slide should try to show that uh, how actually the thin fat is uh, uh, working here and then the device geometry so the first of the thin fat was mainly uh, developed by the UC Berkeley from the professor Chen Minghu in 1999 and he was proposed the structure because try to reduce the off steady current right now if you look at this uh, schematic that should be quite familiar with you so we apply the gate voltage here we apply the drain voltage here and we start to because we apply the gate so we attract some electrons under the dielectric and meantime you also apply the drain so that's why you will have the electron flow from right to the left here so that's the electron in the end this electron flow will become the current here but uh, for the thin fat it moved from the planar this is what we should call the planar structure because the channel is planned on the same uh, plane here to the place of the three dimensional so three dimensional means that this is a source And this is a drain. Still the same, we apply the drain voltage in here. We will apply the gate voltage here. And you can find out that actually the electrons flow came from on the top here, but also in the side wall. So you certainly create the other dimension to control the electrode state to control the potential to control the leakage current here so that's why this thin phase becomes a dominating technology because it shows uh, some of the great advantage to control the on off especially the off current because in the typical transistor we are suffering the leakage from here but now if you make the channel as a three-dimensional you have a better control in this place and better control in the another side and that can reduce the off leakage current and here is the first paper who published related to the thin fat so as I say this is a gate side this is source and drain so you will have the electron flow from here and you also have the capability to control the, the electron flow from the source sidewall and that can give us a better uh, leakage control capability and this was a first paper report in the 1999 with a thin fat with a 45 nanometer gate and again this picture shows that how important the idvg curve because this also the typical idvg to illustrate the thin fat characteristic here and but one thing have to mention that the, the, this work was done in the uh, p mosfet so that's why the idvg curve is in the reverse way so if you look at the drain versus the gate voltage in previous we mainly use uh, almost as a uh, example so that means this is a uh, almost fat and almost fat is mainly uh, use uh, electrons as a uh, carrier transport and on the other hand there's a need that we also will apply the negative uh, gate bias in the case with the n type substrate and this is what we call the p mosfet 
and in the case of p MOSFET, the carrier here is related to the holes here. So that's why this curve is similar to this one because this work was done in the p MOSFET here. And among these IDVG curve, actually there's a one very important characteristic that we call this as a this one, the slope of this. The slope of this is we call this as a substantial swing. Or sometimes we also call this as a substantial slope. And the short is called the SS here. So you can, the SS is 16.9 millivolt per decade. And this work was done with the R side of the 2.7 nanometer. If you, this uh, uh, SS is a very important performance index. If you look at for the previous TSNC 5 nanometer paper, they also report the SS. Here, swing. So that's a SS. So you can find out that actually the even this is a very advanced paper, but the performance we care is more or less the same like this one. Here, so that's this one. So also that's also one of the uh 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 hint that the whatever you learn this from from this class is actually quite quite practical because that's those things are are pretty important for the industry for the for the performance for the product because they all look at this performance at this number. Of course. FinFest already under the production and under the the become the, the product now. And for being the research in the university and the academics, we always look beyond the FinFest. And there are lots of the options beyond the FinFest here, as shown in here. In here is uh, like the completely list for the, all of the different technologies here. I believe that the, uh, every of you might be involved in some of these uh, research de development, for example, like the 3 five, like a carbon nanotube, like a 2D material, like the tunneling fat, even for the magnetic uh, transistor, like the spin logic or the quantum computing. These are a very uh, promising technology in the future to beyond the film fast. And the first one is, we are still mainly focused on the CMOS scaling. So that means that uh, we are can uh, try to overcome the scaling electrostatic issue and also minimize the uh, parasitic uh, here. So when we consider the electrostatic, it means actually we are try to optimize the on of current ratio here. So that's including, for example, the SOI that's already mentioned. The thin fat we also mentioned, but here is what we call the GAA. That's also very important technology now. That means this is uh, very similar to the nano Y. GA is a uh, gate all around. And in the gate all around, we have the structure for the horizontal gate all around, vertical gate all around. And also, for example, this is CNT, it's a carbon nanotube.
And also, this is still follow the conventional CMOS scaling, but we are trying to have the different device structure. And there's something with a new charge based switching mechanism and beyond semiconductor material here. And for example, here, this is uh, the one also very famous, it's called the tunneling phase. And also we have a 2D material fat and also have the negative capacitance. So negative capacitance is uh, based on the ferroelectric material. So these are the new switching mechanisms that can potentially uh, um, promising beyond the thin fat. And also there's a something is completely beyond the charge base switching and this can completely change and different from the CMOS technology because their operation is not the way like the MOSFET, for example, like the quantum computing, like the spin logic. These are the very uh, unique and different, not like the MOSFET, this kind of the charge based uh, switching mechanism here. But that also means that uh, if in the future we have to uh, employ the quantum computing not only for the device manufacturing but also for the circuit design needs complete the new way to do the circuit design because it has a completely different operation completely different physics here so when we consider the the, the transistor actually if you look at the, the many many your seniors work that can be said that uh, we are working on the some of the low power comp consumption transistor low power consumption circuit so what does it mean the low power consumption here actually to understand low power consumption we can also use a simple MOSFET and simple IDVG curve as an example so the this is the typical MOSFET structure here and again if you look at the log drain current versus gate voltage here so we have already shown that the typical IDVG in the log scale is look like this way And that means if you want your transistor to be operate in certain current, you need to bias at this range. For example, probably like a 1.5 volt here. So you have to bias at the 1.5 volt to reach a certain targeting output current here. But if we can make our transistor with showing this showing this curve that means you can reach the same current but with uh, lower operating voltage so that means right now you don't have to apply the 1.5 volt so you can just apply the one volt but that still give us the same current as here and this is because the transistor here this is uh, uh, the slope of this part is usually we call the substantial slope which we have been mentioned, especially in the FinFET paper, they always have to mention the SS. So the blue curve, the SS can be only 
ninety volt per decade. But if we can make this one the yellow curve with a SS around like the sixty millivolt per decade, that can already help us to reduce the operating voltage because this slope is this SS value is smaller. That means this is steeper. That means your turn on is faster here. So lower SS. That actually suggests the steep slope. Low SS that suggests the steep slope. So in the end, if we can fabricate the uh, substrate slope, we can reduce the SS. That means we can have the reduce our operating voltage can be uh, reduced. Operating voltage can be reduced. And that is good for our low power consumption. Because in right now, you don't have to always apply the 1.5 volt. You can only apply the 1 volt. That's already enough to have the same performance of your transistor. So that can reduce the low power. So that's why if you look at, again, for the logic uh, uh, technology, like the FinFed, they definitely will mention the SS because SS is pretty important to imply. This can be used for the low power uh, uh, technology. And if you look at for the previous, I, that's pretty early, I don't show the game. If you look at the previous, like the, the TSNC paper for the final meter, because that's technology used for the logic technology, logic application. So it's definitely will also mention the SS. And as I say previously, there's a one set of the transistor. That's what we call the more than more. So in in here in the left hand side, when we talk about logic for thin fat, that's mainly for the more more. So that's mainly related to the scaling. But that there's a technology that we call the more than more. So the more and more, for example, is used, for example, in the 5G, 6G, so that's for the RF, or the, for the high V power, it's used for the charger or EV. EV application. And in the later slide, I just want to show that uh, how actually these uh, more than more technology could influence for the the power as well. So this is an example, like the how actually the power delivery from the planet until our chip here. So usually our chip only need one volt or one point volt DC, but the problem is that the, the power delivery network here. It's showing like more than 13 kV. So especially this is a 13.8 kV AC voltage. But our cell phone or laptop is only need one volt DC. So how can this be delivered? And therefore we need to have a lot of the power converter here. So first of all, we need to have the 200 volt, 200 volt AC, and then become the 400 volt DC. 
and 48 volt DC and 12 volt DC in the end to the 1 volt DC. So each set has a different efficiency and need, needs a different semiconductor uh, uh, technology here. So, but the problem is that the, the efficiency is not always perfect. So for each transform, you lose a certain efficiency. So you have a 98%, 97, 98, in the end 95, in the end 85. So if you use a conventional silicon solution, it actually only have the 85% of percentage efficiency overall. But if we can use some of the new material, no transistor, like for example, get a nitride. So actually you can replace these two converter as a one, but also because in here you can already transform from 48 volt to one volt, but also with a higher efficiency. So that's still the same for the logic device, we are trying to reduce the power con uh, consumption. But for the more than more device, like the power device, we try to reduce the uh, power loss during the electrical, electricity delivery, and we try to improve the efficiency. And, and this is uh, the typical, this is in the typical domain of the power electronics. And that's a full landscape for the power electronics because in the previous slide, just a, a case using in the uh, data server. But however, for the power electronics, we have a domain in the IT consumer. We have a domain in the automotive, also for the industry. But overall, what we care is the power loss and efficiency. So that's why that uh, you will find out that actually in the nowadays there's a lot of the polyethylene products based on the new semiconductor technology. Here is an, idea, an example that uh, how actually the new material can help and a new semiconductor structure architecture can help. So this is a 200 volt. This is for the silicon device, and this is 200 volt for the gallium nitride device. So that means if we use a gallium nitride, we can actually make this as a smaller and faster laptop adapter. But you have to know this is a slide come from 2014. But actually this is technology nowadays very available because you already can purchase the face charger I think right now, if you Google the face charger, you can already purchase a lot of different type of face charger. Try to reduce the laptop adapter, just like your cell phone, or even your cell phone adapter with a multiple input, multiple output, or also with a very fast charging capability. So this is also an idea that the, what we are doing in the academic, especially in the semiconductor world, I think that's uh, pretty practical. In 2004, 14, I don't think everyone will believe, but nowadays, this technology, that's already on the market for, I think already three to five years already. So in the end, always the power driving the semiconductor innovation because we need to have the energy efficient electronics. If you look at the recently the the AI server, so AI server is also the the the, the application that needs a lot of the the power to drive. So therefore, we need to develop the, the very advanced semiconductor technology to that can use for this uh, AI server. And the last few slides, just want to let you know that what we discuss in this introduction, that's actually not a pure academic. It's pretty practical because that's already in the roadmap of how industry try to put them as become the product. So this is a device option summary in 2018. 
and you can see uh fin fat that's already in production and fully deplete SOI that's also in production and there are some other options that everyone is working in the academic is also very interesting in this field is also considered as a potential being used for the product either for the high performance logic or low performance logic of course the problem is only how mature of this uh, technology it has an issue with uh, 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 manufacturing EO issue also the reliability issue so some of them are very promising but are still very far away from the final production but still many companies still trying to invest to, to look at this uh, technology so this is 2018 and if you look at this is 2019 still more or less the same we have a thin fat we have a nano ship we have a nano wide with a germanium 2d material carbon nano tube these are the all these are the name we have already mentioned in this class but nowadays they are still being comprehensive and extensively studied here and if you look at more recently this is uh, the roadmap like from the now on to the 2036 for sure that's all just a prediction but still the same you can see so i hope now film fair you already know because that's this is a one in the n3 here but also we have the gate all around that's also i have already mentioned that's based on very similar to the nano sheet we also have the uh, gate all around and we have this what we call the c fat and here we won't talk about c fat too much but it just also the the transistor try to stack the nmos and pmos in the vertical way in the previous the cmos the nmos and pmos was placed in the planner but now we try to stack the nmos pmos in the vertical way the, that can make the device for the continuous scaling and then we believe with this semiconductor development we can still on the track with uh, most law and we can still enable a lot of a great performance high performance product okay great so that's the introduction so we will end up the class today so uh, if you have any question just feel free to let me know and uh, uh, I, I just found out that I checked the, the sign up list. Actually, I think there are around 40 students want to sign up. So as you can see, I don't think this class can be accommodate for the, another 40 students. So we will definitely need to do some uh, selections. So we'll inform everyone. Okay, so see you guys next week in the 9.30. Bye-bye.